We now want to talk about a specific visual tool, the document portrait. And the document portrait is available, as are all the visual tools, in the visual tools drop down menu. And if I would select that now, what it's going to do is it's going to do a document portrait for whatever uh, document I currently have clicked on. So the first option for opening the document portrait is clicking on a document that you're interested in, going to the visual tools drop down menu, and selecting document portrait. Alternatively, you can simply right click on a document and choose document portrait from the menu that appears. Now, you can see here where this is the document portrait for the document George. And what this does is show you which codes have been used to code this particular document. And the codes are represented by the colors that you've assigned to each code in the code system. And you read it left to right, top to bottom, like a page in a book. And uh, more than showing you patterns of what order different codes come up, uh, the document portrait is focused on giving you a ratio of how often, or giving you a feel for how often and how much of the text uh, is coded with each of the codes. So uh, the first thing we can see is that the, uh, one of the first codes that was used is this orange which we can see is work issues. So one of the first things that happened in this document, in this case an interview, was that we coded a section as having to do with work issues. However, you can see that orange isn't uh, a color that came up at all during the rest of the interview. And considering that I know that the first question we ask is specifically about work issues, uh, I can tell, okay, the only time this person talked about work issues uh, was when we specifically asked about it at the very beginning of the interview. In comparison, some of the other colors are showing up quite a bit more often. For example, pink, relationships. I can see that relationships was coded throughout the interview. Also, the blue is coming up a lot, so I can see that people in this person's life uh, were talked about quite a bit. So in this person, uh, this person is apparently more relationship focused uh, than some of the others. You can see also health, which is red, only came up a single time. So in this person's life satisfaction interview, health doesn't seem to play a very large role. Now one of the other nice aspects of this visual tool and all of the MaxQDA's visual tools uh, is that you have a live connection to the data. So if I move this over to the side here a little bit, and I want to see what that person said about health, all I have to do is double click on one of these red squares. So if I double click on it, it shows me here exactly what was coded as having to do with health. And we can see them very quickly, okay, this is paragraph 12, when we specifically asked about how satisfied this person was with their health. We can also go down, jump to this section here, one of the sections that we coded as having to do with relationships. Clicking on that shows me then here in the document browser exactly what we coded as having to do with that topic. Just to look real quickly here at the menus, uh, we have the export option. So if I click on that option, I have, I have the ability then to save this particular document portrait as a PNG file, which can then easily be brought into a Word file or brought into a PowerPoint presentation. The next option is to visualize the entire document. And if I have clicked on this, it's also going to show me the white spaces, the spots of text throughout the document that were not coded. Depending on your coding style, it may be helpful to see what you have and haven't coded. And then the third option is to mix the colors when they overlap. So right now, uh, in the standard setting, the document portrait, if this is overlapped here, this orange and the purple, if that's overlapped, it's going to show them after one another. So first the orange and then the purple. If we choose to mix colors, it will show a mixture of that orange and that uh, purple, and it'll be a brownish here. Now, depending on your coding style, this may be helpful uh, for some people if they are coding a lot and overlapping a lot, uh, which was also the case uh, here in this project, it's not gonna be especially helpful because we're gonna have a lot of grays and browns that are hard to decipher. 
Uh, you also lose the ability to jump to that section of the text. So this live connection to the data is no longer there when we are overlapping colors. So if I click on it, it's not going to take me to that section of the document. The fourth option then here is to switch back and forth between circles and squares. Uh, and for some reason that is also, a, it gives you, it makes the picture look slightly different. And the fifth option here is the info button. Anytime you have a question about an, uh, um, a feature in MaxQDA, look for the white eye in the blue circle. Clicking on that will then take you to the specific chapter and section of the uh, handbook for MaxQDA 10 and it will explain that particular feature, in this case, the document portrait. So uh, a lot of the things that I'm talking about now are also here in this section. So if you forget some of the things that we're talking about now, feel free to click on the eye and find out more about it. And then the last option is the red running man, which is just like clicking on the X, it will close your visualization. So that's the document portrait. Mm -hmm.